the road that too often goes nowhere. Harga sahara ini dah yang sekarang muda anda sikit dah yes, aki video sun iram muda dekat di indah sana abang dek itu sikit aki anak gam masa kecil abang ada kubus kah hanya kata sahara. For hundreds of thousands of desperate people, the most difficult leg of their journey starts here. Our aim is to go to Europe so that we can have better living. But the European Union is doing everything it can to stop them coming. And so is Niger, which now sees them as a growing threat to its security. When a car takes migrants to go to Libya where there is no state, they come back with weapons. This remote town on the edge of the Sahara Desert has been a migration hub for centuries. On peut pas dans un no man's land comme le Sahel qui a migration zéro, c'est pas possible. Welcome to Agadez, the African town at the heart of Europe's refugee crisis. The Agadez bus station, a crucial stop on the migrant road to Europe. Every night, buses arrive and offload people from across West Africa. These days, few will admit they're heading to Libya, afraid of arrest. They're picked up by middlemen who send them to what they call ghettos. We find a compound where people wait for word from their handler. Since the industry was criminalised in July last year, the smuggling business has shifted to the shadows. Like everyone here, Mustafa comes from Gambia. Where in Europe do you want to go? Germany. Why Germany? Because Germany is an opportunity land. But Mustafa's run out of money, along with every single man in here. They can't afford to go back or go on. The conditions these men are kept in are pathetic. It's more than 40 degrees outside and there's no running water. It's filthy. You can see that they only have a few of these dirty mats to lie on. So many of them are sick and weak. Whether they're escaping from conflict or poverty, people waiting in Agadez all share the same dream, to reach Europe. They come by bus from West African countries that include Nigeria, Mali, Senegal, the Gambia and Ivory Coast and don't need a visa to get here. Then smugglers take them by truck across the Sahara Desert to Libya, where they hope to get a boat to Italy. In Agadez, most of them don't go outside often, except a shop. They're all worried about being arrested. If that happens, their journey and their dream will end here. Let's, let's go. Agadez is a long one-day drive north of the capital, Niamey. It was once part of the Ottoman Empire, its furthest reach into Africa. It has always been a crossroads. Old caravan routes passed through here, carving tracks across the Sahara. The trade included animals, spices, weapons, and more recently, people. Programs on Radio Nomad try to educate people about the risk of crossing the desert. La migration n'est pas sans conséquences. Et à longueur des journées, à longueur des mois, des années, ces gens vont à leur risque et péril parce que c'est tous les jours des gens qui meurent dans le Sahara ou qui qui sont pris par les naufrages dans les grands océans ou la Méditerranée. Ça, c'est tous les jours. Most of the people here are from the Tuareg tribe. Every five years, the Sultan of Agadez chooses a new district chief. It's something to celebrate and dress up for. But the last decade has been tough for the Tuareg. The tourists who once came to experience the culture and visit the 16th century mosque, left and never came back. Hotels and restaurants closed. The tourist trade never recovered. So the Tuareg embraced a new business, people smuggling. But now it's under threat. 
And it's all bad news if you're one of the men who rely on this business to survive. La criminalité, on tue les gens, tout ça là, ça diminue avec l'arrivée des migrants. Parce que un migrant quand il rentre ici, tout le monde va gagner quelque chose. Les passeurs, les taxis motos, les boutiques, tout le monde va gagner. Et si ça arrête, on ne sait pas ce qu'on peut faire. Back in Mustafa's ghetto, migrants are cooking their only meal of the day. Sometimes we have lunch. But dinner, sometimes it used to be a problem and breakfast. But lunch, always we used to have lunch. And people used to contribute so that we can buy food and cook. And I, I, I am the one who used to cook here. Many of them have been stuck here for weeks or even months, relying on their handlers and praying for a safe journey ahead. If, if God says that you are going to die on the road, you are going to die on the road. If your time is up, you are going, going straight to Italy. But if our chance is not there, maybe we are going to die or we will return back at home. 1,000 kilometres away, in the capital Niamey, the government has passed a law to make people smuggling illegal. It's also asked the European Union for more than $1 billion to help it stop the smugglers. The Interior Minister argues that smuggling destabilises the entire region. It is for our security we do that because, you know, when a car takes migrants to go to Libya where there is no state, no power, they come back with weapons and a traffic uh, feed another traffic. The government's decision changed the way the military operates. It used to escort smuggling convoys into the desert to protect them from bandits in exchange for money. It was an organised departure. Migration on an epic scale. Men, women and children packed into trucks, snaking their way across the desert. But now the police and military have turned against them and against their smugglers. Au début, si tu calcules chaque lundi, il y a plus de 100 voitures qui quittent pour aller à Libye. Même maintenant, par, par semaine, tu vas compter qu'une voiture, deux voitures qui quittent. Donc ça a changé. Tôt ou tard, là, le travail, là, ça va s'arrêter. Avec la police, tout ça là, c'est toujours dans une inquiétude. We travel outside Agadez with Najez military. 1,000 soldiers are out here patrolling the Sahara, an area the size of France. They know where smugglers stop at springs for water and which mountain passes they cross. If arrested, they face five years in prison. Under the government crackdown, police have seized hundreds of migrant trucks and arrested dozens of smugglers. The back of these trucks give you some idea of what the refugees have been through. This one must have had a baby on board, there are baby nappies, formula, and even the shoe from a small toddler. The crackdown has made things harder for the migrants and their masters. Without a military escort, the journey has become even more perilous. These men were attacked in the Sahara. After two, three hours driving, with these bandits and, and these armed robbers anyway. So we are just going, we hear open fire. So our driver stopped, get down the car. So we passengers, we all look everywhere. So we see these guys standing in the bush with the guns. But at least they escaped alive. Sometimes drivers get lost, trucks break down, migrants and refugees are abandoned. It's something this former smuggler knows too well. For eight months, he drove migrants to the Libyan border. One day, he came across men who died after their truck had broke down and they ran out of water. Dan a lokacin mani sai da zuwa da musawai wanda na taru din na barsa da sahilahi salau na suka taro ni kuma da kishirwa kware yi suna neman mutuwa amma wancin da na gani sun mutu na dama ban gani su na gani su ma sun sha wahala wannan da sai na gani sahilahi salau shi shi ne abin ya fi taba mana cikin mutana He gave us these photos he took of the people he found No one knows how many people have died trying to cross the desert over the years but aid workers believe it could be thousands Mohammed is back in Agadez after failing to reach Europe. He crossed the Sahara, spent five months in a Libyan jail, and almost drowned in the Mediterranean. Everybody was 
was, was trying to save himself. You know, so anybody doesn't have time for, for the sick people. So we are there, people were throwing themselves outside the water. So we stay there, and then we were trying to rescue ourselves. We are shouting, shouting, shouting. Mohammed is now in a centre run by the International Organisation for Migration, or IOM. For him, it's the end of the road. Like others here, he's waiting to get the money and papers he needs to return home. The IOM also wants migrants to know the risks they'll face on the way to Europe. Now, uh, the thing has changed and they meet other migrants that are leaving uh, Libya and coming in bus stations and in ghettos and they talk with those migrants and then they realise that most of them have been in jail and they realise that most of them are in a very difficult situation so they think about it twice before leaving. As desert routes close and the crackdown widens, the trip becomes almost impossible. But Mustafa and his friends are still willing to jump on a truck. On departure day, migrants cram into the back of pickup trucks, holding sticks to stop them from falling out, carrying a small bag, and most importantly, water. They face a 1,500 kilometre journey across one of the harshest environments in the world. It's a voyage like none other, crossing a desert, mountain and sea. And for those prepared to brave it, it's a matter of survival. Nicole Johnston, TRT World, Agadez.